I'm Malin Chabi. This is a study of uh, real-world data races in Golang. Golang and uh, this work is done in collaboration with my colleague, uh, Molikrish Ramarathan, uh, ITuber. Golang is a relatively modern programming language. It is compiled, statically typed, type safe, memory safe, garbage collected. It is embraced in microservice development environments. Concurrency is a first class citizen in Go. You can pre prefix pretty much any function with the keyword Go, and the function will be launched to execute concurrently with the rest of the program. These concurrently executing functions are called as Go routines. Go routines are lightweight user space threads. Two or more Go routines can communicate with one another either via shared memory, which is the most commonly used paradigm, or using message passing through channels, even though Go routines all lie in the same address space. Go is the language of choice for implementing microservices at Uber. We have over 57 million lines of code in a single repository at Uber, which hosts about 3,000 Go services, and they run on millions of CPU cores. There are also other languages we use for implementing microservices, such as Java and Node.js. Java is the second most common after Go. Go programs exhibit significantly more use of concurrency and synchronization constructs compared to languages such as Java. When we observe the places where concurrency is created, such as creating a thread or creating a Go routine, we observe that there is about one and a half times more number of concurrency creation places per million line of code in Go compared to Java. Similarly, there is about five and a half times more use of point-to-point -point synchronization in Go code base compared to Java. These points are things such as synchronized, locks, condition variables, and more and more things like that. There is about 18 and a half times more use of group synchronization in Go compared to Java. These are things such as barriers, weight groups. Weight group is a con similar to barriers um, in Go. Uh, clearly, the Go code seems to be more complicated in terms of its concurrency and synchronization behavior statically. Um, but even at runtime, Go microservices expose significantly more runtime concurrency than my Java microservices. For example, when we profiled hundreds of thousands of processes running in our data center, we observed that the average concurrency in Go programs was about 2,048 Go routines, whereas it was about 256 threads in Java. That's about eight times more in Go than Java. More concurrency can lead to more concurrency bugs. Of specific interest to us is data races, which in Go happens when two or more Go routines concurrently access the same shared variable, and at least one of them is a write. So in, this rest, in the rest of this talk, first I will explain deployment of a dynamic data race detector for our Go code, and then I will describe some of the common data race patterns in Go that we discovered. Go ships with a default data race detector. It is a dynamic data race detector. To use it, you'll have to recompile the code so that it can instrument loads and stores. And at runtime, the instrumentation runs, happens before analysis, and feeds it to the time-tested thread sanitizer library. The analysis is aware of Go routines and Go's synchronization constructs. Being a dynamic data race detector, it does not explore all schedules, meaning even for the same input, a data race that is detected in one run may not be detected in another run. The dynamic data race detector introduces about two times compile time overhead, two to 20 times runtime overhead, and five to 10 times memory overhead. So where do we run this race detector? Go has a very rich testing facility. So running data race detector on unit tests is a good starting point, which is what we do. Uber's Go monorepo code has over 100,000 unit tests, and we use the race detector on them. So. When should we run the dynamic data race detector? There are a couple of options. One is at the build time prior to merging any patch. In there, we have a couple of choices. We can either block a patch if a data race is detected. The good thing is that it will detect any problem early. However, a patch can easily slip through the race detector due to non-determinism in schedules that I just described. Worse yet, a later patch may be incorrectly blocked due to a previously introduced data race, and the race schedule may be exposed later on, causing developer inconvenience. 
So instead of blocking, we may warn. The advantage is, again, it's an early detection, but it will be very noisy due to pre-existing data races. And developers start to ignore warnings and become immune to race reports. In either of these cases, there is a high build time overhead, as I, as I showed earlier, which easily violate the SLAs in a continuously uh, integrating uh, CI system where there are thousands of diffs being landed every day. The alternative option is not to run the an race detector on any patch, but instead to run in an offline manner so that we can run data race detector on a snapshot of code. Here, there is no exposed build time overhead. And we wouldn't block any patch for irrelevant reports. And over time, it would expose more, expose and explore more schedules. However, the negative is that the bug detection is late. And once it is found, we need to find an assignee for a defect. And we also have to prevent duplicate bugs being filed as code evolves. And because the race detector is running over and over again, it will keep on finding the same issues. So for finding an assignee, it is relatively straightforward. We can piggyback on the code history and bug triaging system that's usually present in any large industrial setting. Um, to detect duplication, we have a heuristic that looks at the buggy call stacks and builds a consistent hash that is relatively stable across code changes. And this is our choice of running this dynamic data race detector in Go. So here is our workflow every day. On the monorepo, we ex compile the entire code base with the race instrumentation enabled, exercise all unit tests. For whatever races are reported, we deduplicate them. If it is a unique new bug, we generate tasks and file it into a database. And developers independently fix and verify them. So this system has been functional for last over an year, starting from March of 2021. We thought initially that we will find a few data races. We found just not one, not 10, not 100, not 1,000, about 3,500 data races in this one year. Our developer fixed more than 2,000 of these data races. About 600 unique engineers were involved. About 1,200 patches were delivered to get rid of these data races. Worse yet, every day, in newly generated code, we find about 10 to, we continue to find 10 to 20 new data races. So we have uh, sifted through all these fixed and some yet to be fixed data races and classified them based on their root cause, which leads me into the next topic in this talk. It's about the pattern of Go data races. Observation one, transparent capture by reference of free variables in Go routines is a recipe for data races. Here is a simple code snippet which has a for loop that is iterating over an array of items. And for each item, it launches a Go routine that processes that item. So here, the Go routine is written as an anonymous function, also called as a closure. And this closure accesses the item. In Go, here, the item is a free variable, meaning it is not defined in this context. In Go, whenever there is a free variable, it is captured by reference from its surrounding context. So when as multiple Go routines are executing here, accessing this item, the outer loop, as it is creating more Go routines, is changing this item reference to point to the next item in the array, creating a write and read data race here. Concurrent access to Go's built-in thread unsafe maps causes frequent data races. Maps are built-in types in Go. You can create a map with pretty much any key. Here it's a UUID, that's a key. And any type, here it's a string. And we have created a result map. Okay. Then we iterate over an array of UUIDs. And for each unique UUID, it is launching a Go routine, presumably it's an expensive function to process some key. And it is storing the result as a key value in a result map. However, map is not, a, uh, is not like an array. It's a sparse data structure. Mutating one element of the map can mutate the entire map. This is nothing new to Go, but map being a built-in type and the fact that it is very easy to create Go routines leads to a lot more map-related data races in Go compared to other languages. For example, we saw that 
Go code had 1.35 times more use of maps per line of code compared to Java. Mixing message passing with shared memory can cause subtle data races. In Go, you can use both shared memory and message passing for communication and synchronization. Here is an example code where somebody has tried to write implementation of a future in Go, where the effort is made to launch a function asynchronously and wait for it at some time later. Okay? The way it is done is there is some function pointer that belongs to this struct called future, and it is wrapped around a Go routine, and it is launched. Its result, whenever it finishes, is captured in f dot result. Okay? The left arrow indicates sending message. So here, over channel ch, whenever the function finishes, a message is sent. Now, whoever wants to wait on the completion of this function can wait to receive a message from that channel. Okay? But there is a twist to this. The wait is not forever. So the developer says, I am willing to wait for some time, and if it does not finish within a particular time, which is common in transaction processing systems with, de with deadlines, um, they say, I will abort my wait, which is what is done here. Uh, select statement is, a, is randomly selecting one of the cases, whichever is ready. Everything is fine if the function finishes before the timeline, before the deadline, but if a deadline does occur, then the same result variable is assigned an error value. During the same time, the real function may finish and override the result to the same result variable, causing a data race. Here, clearly mixing shared memory and channels is creating data races in Go. Go transparently, transparently converts between by value and by, by pointer semantics, which creates subtle data races. Go like C has pointers. Here is a structure in Go, which has, got, which has two fields, an integer A and an integer B. And the developer writes two methods on, the, on that structure, read A, which reads the field A and returns an integer. And write V writes value V to the field B. Um, but there is a subtle difference. The read of A is on the my object value type, whereas write to B is written to B on the pointer type. And this you can do in Go. Here, this is just like you know the, this pointer in C++ or Java. The only subtle difference is that it need not be this pointer. It can be the object itself. So then the developer creates a structure, my struct, which has got two fields A and B, and launches a Go routine to concurrently write to the field B and also read from field A. And those are two different fields, and he is in the, under the assumption that they should be perfectly fine because they should not cause any data race. They are two different fields. However, while write to B is operating on the object that is created, read from A first makes a copy because it, this function is written to work on the copy of the object. The process of copying races with the process of writing to the same field, which is very subtle data race, not obvious in the code at all. There are other observations which we make in the paper. For example, Go offers more leeway in group synchronization constructs, leading to many data races. Slices, which are dynamic arrays, are confusing types, creating other kinds of subtle and hard to diagnose data races. Running tests in parallel for Go's table-driven testing EDM often leads to many data races. I encourage you to look at the paper for details regarding this. So we have two broad categories of data races, one language-related and one language-unrelated. In the language-related, the slices are often involved in many, many data races. The capture by reference example I showed you is the third common one. Concurrent maps is the fourth one. Confusing pointer versus value and mixing shared memory with message passing are not that common, but still there are about 40 data races, and whenever they happen, they are very subtle. Unsurprisingly, missing to put a lock is the most common one in language agnostic data races. User written synchronization is the least common one there we found only one which was by the way a couple of decades ago there was a paper about data races and concurrent bugs in c++ and they had found that user synchronization was one of the most common one turns out that's very uncommon in go so con to conclude it's very easy to write concurrent go code and people do write a lot of concurrent go code 
There is complex interplay between Go language features and concurrency, making it very easy to introduce data races in Go. There are interesting trade-offs on where to deploy a dynamic data race detector in a CI system. We deployed a dynamic data race detector on our 57 million line Go code base and found over 3,500 data races in an year. We helped fix over 2,000 data races and we continue to find about 15 to 20 data races every day. Our future directions involve developing lightweight race detection techniques in CI and in production and automatic root causing and fixing of data races. Um, we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions if you have any, uh, if you'd like to collaborate with us, here is our contact information. Um, that concludes my talk. Happy to take more questions. Great talk, thank you. Uh, so I was curious, can you make any comments about benign versus non-benign data races? I, I noticed that you fixed 2,000 but found 3,500. Were the other 1,500 benign, just deemed not um, semantically critical, or I wonder what you could say about that. Uh, we, we are following Hans Bohem's philosophy. There is no such thing called as a benign data race. Every data race we found, we fixed them. Um, the question is, what is the level of CRT? Would it cause a crash? Would it, is it due to do with a credit card, bank balance account, something like that? Uh, we did not classify the severity. Uh, so I, I think you were just, you just hopped in there, right? Oh, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, we at Meta have also noticed the frustration that non-deterministic race detectors yield flaky tests, um, where sometimes you detect a race, sometimes you don't. Do you have any ideas about fixing that? If you simply had a deterministic race detector, would you then use it in CI instead of using it daily? It would make it make its deployment easier as long as the overheads are low because there are pretty strict timelines like whenever someone that submits a patch, uh, he wants to see the results, whether it is going through all the tests within a matter of minutes. So if it is within a matter of minutes or tens of seconds, then it would make it easy, it would be easier to deploy into a CI system. And that was mainly a build time limitation in your case, right? Not build a is, when I say build time, it doesn't mean compile alone, compile and run all tests that are affected. Oh, okay. I guess my other a small question, if there's a moment, is um, a lot of these seem like Go has built in foot guns. And Say that again, you, Go seems to have built in foot guns for data races in the sense that you highlighted several language features that make it much easier to write yes. data races. Yes. Are, are there any ideas uh, at Uber or elsewhere about how to fix some of these individual problems? Yes, the, uh, there are a lot of patterns based on, based on for example, this, like the most common ones. Um, there is fairly, uh, there is, a, I would say, about 20%, 20-25% that fall into a category where it is relatively easy to fix automatically. I can have a, a follow-up discussion if you're interested. Uh, yeah, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, that was some very good Rust advertisement, thank you. Um, but my, my question is, so my understanding is that in Go with data races, you can actually violate memory safety. It's not truly a memory safe language because you can have races on these slice types, for example, or on the V tables of an interface type. So is that is that something you have seen or are the, all the data races you've seen, I mean, you said there's no benign data races, but they are they all of the sort that they would not cause memory safety issues, but only logic issues? I didn't fully understand the question, if you can repeat that. So if, I, if in Go, if I have a race on a slice type itself, like I'm copying an entire slice over, then another thread that concurrently reads that slice might get the data pointer, the new data pointer about the old length, and actually do an out-of-bounds memory access yes, yes. and have, have memory safety issues. So yes. like concurrent Go is not memory safe. So I, 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 I was asking exactly. if you are seeing that problem I don't know exactly what happens in, in that event. Would it read out of memory? I, yes. think, I think that's true. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was asking if that's something you saw. Uh, like would, it, would it end up in a crash eventually, right? That, is that the question? It might end up in a crash. So, it might read other or write into uh, wrong Read to random, memory, random yeah. locations and things like that, um, which we did not detect exactly if, while using a data race detector. But there are these so many crashes which for which we do not have explanations. Is that caused by uh, our, uh, and uh, slice related problem it could be it would happen much later it would, would have a very different call stack so i don't have any empirical data to support one way or the other very interesting let's thank the speaker again